Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. Something a little bit different, okay? So, not woodworking tools, but it's something over the years we've had people come in and go, how do you show up in garden tools? We've even done this with a couple of clubs. So, something we want to do that's a little bit different because summer's here. Well, nearly. It's the 1st of April. You're all going to be outside soon. You're going to want to get your garden tools to work, get things to function properly. Now, we have this mass of stuff on the bench in front of me. Ben, if we go to camera two for me a minute. And this is what you've done, isn't it? Last year, you've thrown this all in the back of the shed. You've had enough at the end of the season. It got wet. Everything else. And then suddenly, you've got to get this all out and go, uh. now, you want it to function. You want this to work. And this is a bit like a hand plane, a chisel, all those things. If it's not sharp, it's not going to work nicely. So I want to show you how we can touch these up, restore them. Nothing too difficult. So hopefully you can understand that. All right, we've got, like I say, a whole collection of different things in here. Now, who have we got in here today? We've got Craig doing the questions and answers for us. We've got Ben doing the computer bit and the cameras. So uh, we're going to get there. Okay, so if you've got questions on this or anything, maybe we've done this week with you. Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, so again, as we know, this is live. So it's going out right now. So We've got all this collection. I need to move a few things. We're going to work through the list of stuff I've got here. So let's just get a few things out of the way to make some space. Put that in there. Now, lots of you have this sort of stuff at home, like we said. The gardening side of things, I know this time of year starts to take off. Um, it's amazing on how I've noticed over the years that Different hobbies become very winterized, if you like. So you're wood turning, you're carving, whatever, and then suddenly summer comes, you've got to get out there and get your, your garden into, you know, growing and everything. So you want your shears to cut, your mower to work. So let's have a look at some of these things. So these were put away at the end of last year. So my garden shears, what a lovely colour. So we need to clean these to start. They've got a little bit of rust. So this is some camellia oil. So we're just going to spray this on. And believe it or not, for a second, we're going to put them out of the way. Just going to put them to one side, okay? So all we've done is spray that on. I want it to let it settle in for a second. Then we're going to clean them up. Simple set of succotairs, okay? So I want to sharpen these. Now you get different manufacturers, different makes. You can have whatever you like. We're going to sharpen both sets. These, as much as they look very similar, are quite different. So one set we can do this with we get the right end hopefully we can undo our nut take it apart I'm just going to grab my glasses i want to see what's happening make sure i don't lose anything i've got the washer i can take the spring off the handle now this set of shears and succotairs i can actually get the bag out so really nice that i can take that out get to there so we want to sharpen this now we actually look at this carefully i have a sharpened beveled edge on one side. This is hollow ground. There's a slight secondary bevel on the front. Nice big flat area on the back. So where can we sharpen? Now, it's very difficult freehand to sharpen up this angle and match it, get it to work nicely. So it can be easier with something like this. And this is quite a nice size one to do because we can get the blade out. Oh, a little diamond stone that we've used over the year. Okay, so useful to get out. Doesn't just have to be your woodwork tools. So I'm going to use a little bit of that oil for a second. This is the thousand grit. I'm going to do the flat. So the hollow grind is on the top. The flat is on the back. Just going to go from there. Move it back and forwards. Now what I'm really trying to do as much as anything on here as well is take off some of the gunk get rid of some of the mess that was up on the back of this so we're getting there we're started going to take a little bit of effort now i've cleaned the gunky bit off i'm now deliberately working if you like parallel to where that cut edge is pushing it down that diamond stone a little bit of pressure with my fingertips we'll see we're polishing an edge up that's getting good now, the problem with things like your secretaries, if these don't function nicely, what's going to happen? First of all, you've got to force things. You're going to hit your hands a little bit. I've been there, done that. You also won't cut the branch, the rose. Whatever you want to do, won't cut it off nicely. So you want to make sure you can get a nice clean cut. Now, clean most of there and the back. 
that's there. Look, you can see that nicely. Just going to do a tiny bit down that knife edge. Now, we've got a long bevel. I think you can see that on the camera nicely. That's great. Look, down through. I want to get that front edge. So my fingertips, I'm going to draw it through. Down a diamond foul. Nice to use. Why diamond file over, say, water stone or oil stone? This will stay nice and flat. Unlike our water stone, we're going to wear the edge. I will say my wife was really excited about the fact that I said I'm going to sharpen some garden gear. So, hence the fact I seem to have all her nice valuable stuff that she wants me to sharpen, get it to work again. Nearly there with it. Feeling a lot better. Fingertips and touch will tell you how things are progressing. Trying to get rid of any beer on the back edge. Now again, as we've already said, things aren't sharp. It's really going to apply to the next set in a minute. And they're a bit different in construction, harder to do. Something where I can take the blade out so much easier to sharpen up. Gives you a bit more access to it. As we've done most things, and this might seem a bit over the top, but these are a good set of shears. Go watch that sharp edge on the back there. So I just want to take anything as a bear off. So we've gone leather strop, pulling towards us, and nice and flat. So I'm hoping, let's just have a look, bring that down. Okay, we can see the hollow there. We've got a shiny back bit on the back there. So, getting better. I can see tiny wire edge that I just haven't managed to take right off the corner. Good. Now, we have a logical thing with these before we go throwing everything back together. We want to protect it and make sure it's clean. This was a new one here a while back. What can we use? Um, Camellia oil actually, as its name applies, comes from Camellia, so I'm hoping this is non-toxic. It's better than anything else I've found. I feel it also cleans the gunk off nicely, but it also will help lubricate. It will stop things rusting and help protect it. So on this face, I think we can probably see there, let's have a look on where we are. Ben, can you go to camera two for me? Good. This is the other side, so the blades on here coming together. So we just want to clean this face up, literally give it a wipe over, take off any residue, gunk left over from what we prune with it. Doesn't need a lot. Should be good, just to clean that up. Now we're going to put these back together. This is where we've got to try to remember now. So that goes on there. That's that way. I need to get that bolt I took out down through. Sensible thing if you're unsure about how things come apart. Got paint there. Take a photo before you take it apart. Can't quite get my bolt in. Got a little lip on there, look. Got a flat that side. Hopefully. Ooh. Big bare edge on there, and I can't figure out where that suddenly appeared from. Sounds good. Or maybe, Jason. Aha. Good. Put them back together there. That'll drop on. I'll wash it and I'll nut. First one done. So I'm just going to tighten that up. Finger tight to start. We need to get the spring back in. Check how they work. I can tighten this back up. This is the lock nut. If I get the right size. Okay. Not quite going to fit on there. It's weird. We'll deal with that in a second. Let's see what I've got. Going to look brutal now. Going to make a magic spanner. This is 11 mil. I can find a 10 and a 12. So, that's better. Not too much movement. A little bit. Going to do one more. Okay. Hopefully, a bit better there. Okay. We'll give that a good tight in a minute. Craig's just gone to get the 11 for me. 
I know when I looked at this earlier. Okay. Marvellous. Bit of an odd size, and I don't know why. Okay, that's better. We're on. So, how tight? You need to be able to move them. Okay, you might over tighten this up. Drag, so a little bit back off. And that's worth playing with as well. If you get the tension wrong on this, they're going to move, going to flex side to side as you try and cut. So just a little bit too much again. It's going to be weird now. How can we test if things cut? Hoping it'll cut paper easily with no effort. Um, I know when I tried these earlier, all we actually did was fold the paper. Really weird. So that's quite nice that we're cutting, getting a nice straight line. So one set done. Becca ones. A bit weird on here now. If I bring this up, a lot harder to take apart. Yes, they have a lock nut. But they also have this funny spring washer on the back. Very difficult to take off. So I don't want to try and take that apart unless I have to. Makes it more aggravated to get it apart, get back together, you're likely to break something. As you can see, really gunky and dirty. So a little bit of the camellia oil will work nicely on there. We've got small diamond file, four grades, 120, 240, 180, 320. The higher the number, the finer the grade. So we're going to start midway. I'm going to go 180. I'm just going to raise it up, sit it on a block, and that's what I'm going to get. Some of want it for later, but I think it's going to show you a bit better what's happening. So I've got my block of pine I want for some of the other tools. You can sit this nicely on here, the 180 grip. I've got the flat jaw, the long bit with the knife edge. I've got the flat side. The other side is the hollow grind. Difficult to sharpen the hollow. I want to first of all clean off anything on there that's debris, dirt, left over from last year. So our diamond file is working nicely. The camellia oil, like I said, will help clean it, but start to protect and get into the metal. Let's come up through now. Change my direction a bit easier, longer stroke coming up through there. Hopefully you're seeing what we're doing here. We're cleaning off all that debris, getting back to a sharp coloured knife. So Ben, it's better we go number two for me. Look at that. Okay, let's just lift it up. Very different colour now. The other side will give you an idea of the colour where we're. So getting better. So we've got one eight. I'm going to go up through the grades. 320. I want to be a lot finer now. Now if you think this gunk, if it builds up on the back of the blade, it's going to affect how that cutting it it will stick on that sharp edge the sharp edge actually will go blunt with the gunk as well and obviously the pressure needed will affect it tiny bit right up on the front i can't quite get yet so we'll work up that end and monitor how much shine there is trying to make sure i'm not leaning forward too much and blocking the camera turn it over now i've got to get into here for action gonna again Want something just to sit it on to try and make it more stable so we're in a good position. Craig's got a question for us. What have we got? Yeah, so a question from uh, the Blue Light Turner's Workshop. Um, if you don't have a stone, how can you sharpen your garden tools? Can you sharpen them on the pro edge? You possibly can. It depends on if it will come apart, okay? Um, so if you've got something like a linisher grinder or even a bench grinder, but the problem with that is, it's the support, the accuracy, okay? Very difficult. We're going to do lawnmower blade later. And I looked at sharpening this maybe bench grinder. But this blade on here, it's all curved. So you can imagine trying to sit this on something as a table with lawnmower, it's going to rock about. So you need to look at how you can support it. If you haven't got something like a little diamond file, they're not that expensive. You'll find different uses for Great for things like little knives. You could use a blazer paper. Most of us have got those sort of things. But a little diamond file would be really good. Motorized will speed things up. Yes, it will be quicker, but it's not as controllable. All right, it can be quite aggressive. You don't need to, and imagine if what we're doing here, I'm taking a minimal amount. If you take too much off, you're gonna grind the shape back. You're actually gonna lose how those two blades come together accurately. 
that's really important to get out of the chair. So personally, if you can, do this by hand. One of the reasons we're doing this by hand is exactly that scenario. It is more controllable for us, okay? So don't want you vandalizing your garden tools. I want you to restore them so they will work. So if you can, go back to something by hand, might be easier. I'm gonna show you another little thing in a minute, but this will work nicely. So just gonna do this inside edge. Now, I've deliberately raised it up. Let's move the bot, the chameleon roll, because I think with Craig where he is, you can see the angle there. Now, by raising that up, I can sit that on there beautifully. Okay, Craig's got another question before we keep going with this. Okay, go on, Craig, go on, do your question, mate. Okay, so a question from, from my direct towards myself from Kevin. Kevin, you've asked about um, removing a one morse taper arbor from a Jacob's chuck. It refuses to move. I've been there, my friend, I feel your pain. Um, so give it a good soak in WD, firstly. I'm sure you've probably done that. Now, what I try and do, I would try and probably grip the arbor in a vise, try some wooden packing jaws so you don't damage the arbor, and then get a um, strap wrench, maybe a leather strap wrench, something you use to take the oil filter off, filter off the car, and try and twist the chuck off the, the taper. Um, that's one way I do it. There is another way. If the chuck itself has a screw hole through the middle of it, then there's a potential you could get a bar and tap it out once it's had a soak in the WD. Um, I'd try those two methods, my friend, and um, good luck to you. Okay, so Craig's finished with his question. Now, I've just worked on the top of that sucker tear bag. I've used a bit of chameleon oil to soften the gunk, get rid of that dark colour, all that residue that's left over from using this. I've just used the diamond file on the 320 grade to get right down to where the cutting edge is. So if I lift this up and go to two, you should be able to see a little bit of shine right in that front edge. You can see it there nicely, okay? A tiny little bit. I'm sure it's a little bit blurred. As I come up, it will blur it a little bit, but got a nice sharp edge on here that even feels sharper I can possibly and this is where these are more tricky because I can't take these apart so liver strut it's not that necessary it is a good urban tool it's not nice refined hand plane or chisel but it will be worth polishing that up um I never used to use a strop it's amazing on how different that will make something just using a strop now, the other good thing with this, okay, you can see where we're cutting. Oh, a little bit there. Okay, hold my paper, hold it nicely. So I'm hoping you can see what's happening there, how these work, okay? Much better than they were. Now, the other good thing with what we're doing now, with that chameleon oil going with the net, soak in nicely. I can clean it up with the Webrex. That's synthetic steel wool. So this is the same, uh, this is a free grit, 360 grit. Web bricks, so really good for cleaning up, getting rid of that debris. If I'm going to use them, I will try and spray them with something that's a little bit chameleon. We've got one other place we could possibly touch on these, which we did on the other, is the flat. So I'm looking at a little diamond foil again. We want the fine grade 320. Couple of swipes just down through there. Don't need a lot. Okay, so I'm hoping that looks good. Cool. Yeah what to do let's have a look at our garden shears a second very similar and i know we're doing similar things the reason we sprayed these with the camellia oil when we started i want it to soak in we need to clean some of this off so that webrex is really good this is something you'd need to do hopefully once a season and now's the best time before you get out there let's get things sharp touched up Now, what we're actually cleaning off here is all the gunk from your grass or whatever you've used these on. Um, some of you will be into your topori and want to do your hedge trimming and shaping. You might use your garden shears. So, really good way of cleaning that up. Now, I'm hoping, and I think we can probably see it at Craig's camera in a minute. We're just going to, a little bit more on here. You can see, I hope, the difference between the two blades. Different colour. Really good to get rid of that. And the other question is, what is that? Um, some of that gunk could be off some toxic plants you've got, so then you start touching something else. 
maybe this is good to clean away, get rid of it. So get that web racks to work. Let's do the outside as well while we're there. A little bit pushing that in. And if your shears are really, really blunt, you might need to take them apart. You could possibly grind them on something like a Tormek. Be a good way of doing it a lot slower than a bench grinder. Not as aggressive. You'd have to set them up accurately. Tormek to actually do a jig that you could load this into. You take a small sliver off the front edge. My scenario, I don't want to go get the Tormek out. We're going to go back to our little diamond file. So let's go. Actually, we're going to go with a knife one, but it's slightly bigger. So this is a knife file diamond sharpener. A little bit of oil. Help this. Oil help lubricate it. Push it in. So we've got a nice flat side. We've got a curved side. Again, I think, just to help raise it up, to give me a bit of access and give us a block we can sit on, I'm going to come down through there. Now I'm set across the flat. Set it on, push it back and forwards. And this is really basic stuff. Um, I know when we did this with one of the garden clubs, they were quite shocked on, we could do this by hand. Yeah. All right, I thought I'd need to take it to a special garden place and have it sharpened. Over that, they bought all their tools and wanted a free sharpening session, maybe. I don't know. But work down through. Flip it over, other side, flat edge. So this is the internal where the blades come together. Get myself stable, that's better. It means I can get a bit of pressure. I'm trying to keep flat across the blade. Now the blade on here actually, very slightly hollow ground. I can feel it through there. A lot of gunk on there. So I'm again going to spray it. Soften that resin. Let's see what grade we've got. Four grades on here. I want something really coarse for this just to get rid of that. That sounds different to what we're using before. Come on, then, Craig, what you got? Yeah, I've got a question from GDB. Would you use the Excalibur um, blade and bit cleaner instead of the chameleon? Um, I try and go with the chameleon. Now, the reason I say that it's a natural oil out of a plant extract one product only from what i know it says it's an irritant um i know when i started here i was actually told you could drink it but they wouldn't advise it so it might have a bit of an adverse effect on you so don't go drinking it okay we do label it as an irritant we do have to do that the blade and bit cleaner i don't know what's in it okay and i don't want you putting something toxic onto these and then going off and catching things so your camellia oil to me would be a better aspect better thing to use okay so now try and stick with that WD-40 is another thing where I kind of go, I'm not sure what it's going to do. Yes, it will help stop the rust, but will it have an adverse effect that what's going to hit your plants? So, getting there. Cleaning off the debris that we've left behind. Um, I can see at the end of this season, these won't just be thrown in the shed. I might have to do a little bit of maintenance to make sure that things are all right. See what's going on there. Getting better. Now, clean the residual. See what happens on here. I don't know if you can see that on two. Look. Yeah, horrible. So, let's clean that out a bit. And this is something I will say when we used the Camellia with the garden club that came on. It was a bit of a learning curve on what's going to soften dried out grass and whatever else. And we found it worked nicely. It does soften it up enough. So now what we're trying to do is move, remove a minute layer off the surface of the metal. We don't want a lot. I'm bridging across the hollow grind. This is the same scenario if you're doing scissors. Takes a little bit of time. Looks totally different on there. Just going to flip it up. Inside face. Up through here. Now I think for this, just to make it safer, Craig's just going to move our camera just a little bit so we can get up to there. Okay. 
just to make my life easier and give me something to hold it on. I want the 320. I'm just going to scrub my body around. Now I'm looking at the internal face. I don't want too much down through here. I'm trying to see where the bevel angle is. It's there. Down through. I just need to raise up just a tiny bit on the far end. That's better. Give them that small diamond file because it's not too cumbersome, not too heavy to support. Taking a little bit off. Controlling this nice and gently. Now, can you imagine trying to do this on the bench grinder? It's going to be tricky to do. So, nice and easy. Push down through. Good. One side, flip it over, get enough just in the vise that gives me enough access. Same grip, let's just get a clean through 20s there. Then we'll take a lot off, which is just really, if you like, now removing that excess gunk left behind. Get a nice shine down through that edge. So hopefully, let's give them a quick wipe over. Now, first thing we go to camera two, then I think a bit shinier, get reflection off the light. So we've removed all that hard gunk, which is more here, especially on the inside faces. Just going to flip them over to there. I think Craig will see what's happening there a bit more. Okay, look at the colour change from outside to the inside. They want something there. Now, they've also got a nice coat of camellia again. I'm hoping. Oh, not quite. Let's have a look. Nearly. Getting cuts. I just can't hold the paper. Great. Okay. So, back to being sharp again. I don't fold my paper. will be good. Right. They could do tight, slight tighten on the nut. Put your back in under the bits of paper for the spanner. Not quite on there. So again, a little bit of slop on this now. So I just want to bring this up half a turn. That's there. Good. That'll close them up like your set of scissors again. So that's good. A bit of movement on there. You can adjust how much tightness you want. That's quite important, but definitely a lot cleaner. Nice, sharper edge. So Pori once again, very much the same. We could just, you know, about these I can even take apart, but once they're together, I can actually just do over the top. Again, let's have a little bit of oil. Two, four, clean it up. So we're hitting that internal face, a bit like a set of scissors, if you like. Let's remove the gunk, flip it over, 320, lot finer. Be fine enough for this sort of thing. And we're removing all of that mess that we had on there from left over, dried out, flip it over, other side. Pick up the diamond file. Off we go again just to do those. I don't actually need to try and touch the cutting edge, or what we would assume is the cutting edge. Let's do the easy face. Down in between. Okay. Again, already looking cleaner. We tighten there. I need a tiny bit if we can. I don't want to touch too much of that internal face again. I think on these, I'd like to. I probably could take my part. It doesn't take long on these. But I think with where we are, just going to go back into that vice, set it up, find my angle. And a little bit of deflection down the end, so I'm trying to get rid of that. Better. Push that down through. And again, we're using that 320 grit, so more new amount coming off. Again, back in. Now you can kind of see when I've set up with the vice now, it makes this so much more controllable. 
I'm being able to use both hands to steady the file. I can drop onto my angle. I can feel it when I'm on here. Once I've found it, lift my hands off, come back, repeat the angle quite easily. If you're doing it freehand and you're up in the air, all over the place. Let's have a quick look on there, see what we've got. Hopefully. Running out of paper. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Okay. So your head trimming shears now will be, okay, fantastic. This thing. Now, this and this, they're very similar, just different countries. So this is a Japanese garden hoe, a Western style hoe. So we could sharpen both of these very similar. This is just sharp on the front edge. I need to get rid of on here the rust and the all the gunk in behind. Okay, so this has got at the moment a lifting up, trying to make sure we don't take anything off the wall. Lots of dried out mud. So brass bristle brush. Easiest way to just clean that up. This is the stupid thing we should on at the end of the season. Before you put them away, clean this off because this is going to encourage rust to form. It absorbs the moisture. It's dried out a little bit there in the shed. But one side. Look at the rust underneath. So, okay. Gently drop my handle down. Okay. Now. I think. Let's see where we get to on that. These are going to lay on the bench, but a couple of you with your questions. Trying to get the idea of can we motorise it? So Craig's going to draw himself into the camera. I've got my little diamond thing so on here. That's that. Okay. Now, what do I want to look at? Up on here, Craig's got his view. We know what you're looking at as a how most of you, for this sort of thing. This needs to have a sharp edge. At the moment, very thick and heavy. We can do both sides. We could go with a number of things. We could go diamond file. We'd go hand file. Lots of you have got hand file we can come across. Okay. A few of the guys where they've said about, could you go with your ultimate edge type grinder or your bench grinder? Again, the problem with this is accessibility. It's a long handle thing. It's very difficult to take to the bench grinder and get nice and clean. So we've got a little proxen grinder, small angle grinder. And again, four inch bench grinder can be a bit too heavy for this. Not easy to control. So small and I've got sanding discs, okay? So I come to you, we can come across. Again, you need the goggles. So, working across there, I can see shine forming. Try to get right on the near corner to move. Come across, I'm using the guard on the side of it, giving me just a little bit of tilt all the way through. Just a more. Trying to get this down to. Flat edge on the bottom, angle on the top, so back in again. Okay, let's have a look on there. Let's just flip more bits and over and caught earlier when I would. So, hopefully, let's go down to there. Difficult to show you on this, but we can get this down to a nice sharp edge quite simply with something like that. You can see the color chain, flat bottom. If I've got a little bit of a beer on this, it's not going to matter too much. We could turn it over, do a slight flat on the back. Okay, so drop them in there. If I was going to clean the back up, I want to actually sit it onto something flat. Diamond file, just to take that bear off, work across it. Don't need to do loads and loads of work on this. You want this to be flat. 
all the way through. Your sharp edge coming from the other side. Again, we've got a little bit of rust. We've cleaned the waste of the mud and everything off. Let's protect it. Stop it rusting out. Keep tools to the last a bit longer. Quite a simple one to do. So let's put that one out of the way for a second. Smaller one. Japanese garden, garden hoe. Now, this is one of my favourite garden tools. Okay, Why? It works pulling towards you. So you put it around the plant you want to cut off. So in other words, I, yeah, okay. And you pull it towards you, you cut it. So it cuts nicely as long as it's sharp. Um, my garden has lots of flint stones. So need to make this steady. Trying to see where we are just with the cameras. That there, that will work nicely. I think I'm parallel to the video, so that should be good. Diamond file. Again, something small. So if we can go there, we've got 240 grit. Work across. Now I've got a sharpened edge on here. And again, by getting myself stable, I'm putting it on something, not rocking about. I could come up to there, it might be even better as long as we get. Just trying to see where we are, camera. Work down, throw it. Push along. So your little diamond file again, just taking a minute amount on there. Now, I can't imagine trying to do this on a grinder. Let's have a little bit of oil. I want to clean that up. I want to go down a grade. So I'm on the three two. Let's go a bit coarser, 120. Clean it up again. Got a little bit to remove here. I want to get this right down to a sharp cutting edge. Right up, there, up to the point. Little blocking underneath, just supporting the corner. Move my head back out of the way a little bit. Sorry, Ben. So, what's happening? Can I feel a tiny burp here coming on the other side now? So, just checking the grades on the diamond foil. Finish off on something a little bit finer. Gonna flip him over. Put it flat. I can go across the back edge, which is nice and flat. And again, this is 320 grit, nice and fine. And again, really the idea of having the pine block on the bench is just to raise me up so it makes it easier to see on the camera, just to give you an idea of what's happening. Got rid of most of the rubbish on there. Just want to check. I haven't looked at that. What we've got back here. That mud or just rust? I think it's rust. Web bricks again. You could use. Get up to here. Clean that in. Degunk it. Make things last longer. Wipe it over so the camellia oil has a chance to settle in. See what we've got there. A bit of mud. Yeah, okay, that'll be okay. Got rid of that the fingertip. Wipe this over. This will dry into the surface, add a nice barrier. I don't know if this will work. Let's have a look. It's a bit over the top for a garden tool, but we can cut. Okay, so we've got line in our paper. So that's good. One down. Something I've definitely got to go home with sharp. And I don't know why we don't think of sharpening spades. Um, again, when we said my garden down here, definitely a lot of flinch. So let's just grip that in. So again, the block and support. Make your life easier. Most of us just sort of, oh, well, I'll just pick it up and go freehand. So on there nicely. Now this one go do some real simple. Hand file. Lots of us have got a hand file. Your spade doesn't have to be a razor edge, does it? A block. Fit things in like a spade. Batter. Work round. Now your spades tend to be stainless, possibly, or high carbon steel. This is a high carbon steel one, hence the fact it will rust. They can both be sharpened. 
One side. Let's do a little bit the other. Going to flip him over. Tilt it back up a bit. Again, that block's doing something for me on the move. We don't need to get this down to a riser edge, but let's have a look where we are. That's up. A little bit more. Right, getting some words in edge. I want to have a tackle of this rust that I've got there. That's mud. So I'll we'll just drop that. Let's get rid of it. Try and lose that rust patch. So the web racks again, just working across. Get rid of all of that. A little bit camellia. Wipe. Or spray it on. Let's wipe that in. Pull it up the spade a little bit. Ooh, didn't see all the mud this side, look. So. Again, we can do a little bit of the oil. Wipe it in. Really trying to get that bit that's not too protected. So where we've lost the paint, but we've got something as a sharper edge again. Coming down, we can do both sides working in. Let's have a quick look. Okay, hoping you can see that. Then can you go two for me out of the way. Similar thing we can do. Edging spade. A lot of you got those. We put them in the vice. We can file this from both sides. It's exactly the same. So no issue with that one. Okay, last thing I think. Let's clear a few things. Create a bit of room. Craig, what you got? Just a question from Vicky. Uh, are you planning to do an axe today? Doing a axe? We could do an axe if you want. Let me just grab. I mean, we have one. We can. Okay. So it's something we've thought about. Hence the fact you're there. I'll wait to see if we're going to get any questions. Why was there? Mm, it's there. Do we? Don't we? We've shown quite a few axes with you. If you go back through what we've done, we've done torment where it'd be good to do. So. If you haven't got something like Tormek or something you want to do an X, or maybe it doesn't need that heavy grind, again, try and think about how you're going to hold it. So you go vice. Okay, we can get them into there. I'm going to lock it in. Again, diamond files will be good. Which one do I want? Just tidy it up. Look, let's have that one. Again, a bit of camellia will be good. Stop that rust and all that resin. I'm just trying to see. Let's just tilt this a little bit. I'm just trying to give you. See if we can get you a better shot for the camera, is what I'm playing at now, guys. All right. I don't know if I can quite lock my vice there. That's a shame. I've got to come up to there where I've got the grooves in the jaws. But I think that's a better angle you can probably see. Okay, let's go with it like that. I'm trying not to block too much of what you're seeing. So a diamond file, again, you could use, we've got an edge. Well, I've got that diamond file, I just want to clean off that gunk. I can actually push gently around. Ha, ha, ha. Let's get it back in the jaws and we're going to lose your angle. You can, not, can see it a little bit, but I've got to go up to there. I'm sorry. So you can see we've got a diamond file. We've got the bevel coming down either side. Push around it. You could push upwards if you like, but I prefer coming on that curve. And this has got a little bit of a curve. It's amazing with the old guys how they used to sit down with an oil stone or a water stone and they'd sit down and sharpen it. So, so I can do the other side easily. I'm going to move the vice around a little bit. 
lock it back in. That's quite nice. I can get to here. Push around it. You can, oh guys, I used to watch play with oil stones, go out around. I prefer to work in fluid motion, keeping my angle. No right or wrong, different people. Pushing through, okay. If it needs some major work, something like the little grinder, bench grinder's a bit of a no-no, but it's gonna generate a lot of heat. It will soften it if you're not careful, you blew it too much. So have a look on there. We're just gonna grab a leather strop, um, again, let's flip it over to the lever strop the other side. That's about removing any wire edge, not too critical, maybe for an edge. Got to pull it away from the cutting edge. Don't know, tricky one now. Hoping we get a line nice and clean as well, okay? So, yeah, not so good that way, Jay. So, okay, there it is. All right, so nice and sharp. So, not impossible to sharpen, depends on how much work you've got to do to it. Again, if you, you want a digging tool to use in the garden, you've got the spade, okay? Um, I will say I can remember my axe getting used on some bamboo at home a while back and kind of going, not really meant to dig the bamboo out with the axe. So it's better to use a spade or something that's appropriate for that task. Keep it away from the stones. So if you keep it away from the stones, you're not going to dent it, you won't chip it, you haven't got so much work to do. If you've got a lot of hard work to do, look at what we did with the Ultimate Edge last week. You could put it on the grinder, we shape it, or even the Tormek one that bended on the T4. Really good for that. Have a look and see what, okay? That's a rapid way of stock removal. If you just want to touch it up, little diamond fault is fantastic for that, okay? Right, so, lawnmower. Wow. Now, this thing has got, I don't know if Craig can get, let's have a look. Okay, hold him there. Mm, okay. What do we do with our lawnmower blades? Wow. How many of you actually look at this? This took some effort to get off the lawnmower because the, the bolt got a little bit rusty and need to clean that up. And then got all this green residue where the Incredible Hulk's been playing with whilst it's been in the shed. Um, he'd need a little bit of care, but we all just get the lawnmower out, start, cuss and curse it. It won't start if it's petrol. So we need to actually give this a bit, a bit of a chance to cut. And the easier it cuts the grass, the better the finish will be. Does need a little bit of care. And like I said, we all just, just put it aside, we don't worry. So, gonna go back up into there. Again, this is just safer. Into that bit. Lock it up tightly. I think to start with, because we've got a little bit to remove. So let's have a look back on here, and figure out which way that is, that's better. Okay, so all an awful work there. Careful to roll it over this time, right, so. We can come across there. So a little props and grinder is great for this sort of thing. It's minor, easy to hold, there's no weight. Get my angle up on my hand, I can move it along. Now I'm using the vice on here nicely. Give me something of support so I can move it back and forward. Keep my angle. Working that side a little bit. Let's have a quick look. Now I know I'm not going to get this all the way down to chip free. I know that's not going to happen, okay? But I can get rid of most of them. Craig, what you got? Yeah, I've got a question from uh, GDB again. Um, would you recommend treating the wooden handles on garden tools? I've got to, in reality. And it's something I know we haven't looked at. And I, it's weird because you've hit on one of those questions where I got this in earlier and I looked at this. Ben, can you go overhead? Ooh, what a handle. So 
my aim with this when I looked at it, and lots of the other stuff I've got. So my spade has got a nicely varnished handle. The hose got plastic fiberglass handles. The wooden one? No, I want to do something on this. I need to keep this from absorbing that moisture. Okay, and the reason I say that, it's a really good bit, especially the ferrule end. The ferrule on here will be a steel ferrule. Now, we look at the blade. I can't see what's happening up inside this ferrule. I can move it on and off. I didn't realize that. But look at the color of the wood underneath. Now, if I'm not careful, the wood, if it's not protected, will absorb the moisture when we're using it. And you'll remember to put these away, don't you? Don't ever leave them in the garden overnight or leave it in the rain or all those things. I love the fact Craig's laughing over here. I dread to think. Okay, so the timber, if it's untreated, will absorb the moisture more. It will hold it like a sponge. So if I'm not careful, the furrow will rust out, become useless. It'll, it'll rust out and fall off. Or when it actually fits into the handle, there's a metal pin, quite a weak bit on the shank. You run the risk that that wood, the sponge effect, absorbing the moisture, going to put a lot of rust in the bit that you can't see and get to. So at least if I protect it with something wood-wise up through the handle, yeah, definitely. So an oil, a varnish would be good. I'm going to go home and oil it. All right, I want to put a good coat of oil on there so it will protect it, just stop that happening. Things like the spade, already got that on. Nice shiny surface, ash handle, so would be good. Go on then, Craig, what you got? And uh, what oil would you recommend? I think we do an Osmo garden, furniture oil, that sort of thing. So something that is designed for an exterior use, that's important. No point in going just with a uh, finishing oil and putting it on if it's designed for internal because it just won't last in that environment. So have a look and make sure you get something I would class as an exterior garden furniture oil. I know there's an Osmo one. We do things like decking oils, so those sort of things. So let's get back to our lawnmower. Though. So this one, not bad now. Now, with your lawnmower blade, it's got to be balanced. So need to turn it around. I'm just going to go, let's have a quick look on there. Now I said to you about bench grinder, I looked at trying to, could we do this on a bench grinder? Wouldn't it be lovely? Let's go back to free Ben. Right. Look at the curve up through here. Now I looked at putting this on the table, it moves too much. Now the problem with this is, this is moving as it hits the wheel, you're going to chip the wheel. It's also, is very fast and aggressive. It will take the tall steel out of this and this is designed to hold an edge. It's not as hard, as hard as the wood chisels or hand plane blades that we're behaving with, but it is designed to hold an edge. So the minute you heat this up, you're going to soften it. It won't last as well. So it's worth just spending five, 10 minutes, something cleaning up. So we're going, if you like, a little angle grinder, as we said. So this has got sanding disc. All right, so not too aggressive. You could go, this even actually has a small grinding wheel we could use. So why am I using the sander? If you really want to know, it was in there. I kind of looked at what we could do. Could we change that, change it over? But actually the sand is working quite nicely. It will help reduce the heat buildup because this isn't a continuous grade of paper. It's lots of little bits. So it helps keep my heat down just a fraction on there. So that's quite an important part. But I'm just going to free for me, look. So you can see all the little flat wheel discs. Really good for that help heat, keep that heat to a minimal, stop us blowing the tool steel and damaging it. So that's a good thing. Got the guard on the back. I'm using the guard. I have a run along. On here, I've even used my hand as a guide. Keep the thing at the handle. So simple to do, actually, in ways. So let's do the other side. So we've got that bit on there. I'm not going to put it down upside down. It flips on. So that bird. Across. I've got my angle, I'm looking at what's happening as I'm grinding. Where do I want to take material from? Try to keep it straight. Back up to there, but... Oh, so the beauty of this is the side. It's compact, there's no weight, it's not heavy, it doesn't drag it down. Easy to control with smaller discs. Trying to get a big chunk I've got out near the top. Go so nearer the voice. Blend it in. Don't need loads of pressure. It's running nicely, we're not draining on the motor. So nice light pressure will help. 
Also looking at where we're tucking to make sure the sparks are going away from me. So I'm actually tucking the bit like that. Look at this, about nine o'clock on the wheel. One side. Let's have a quick look, just feel what's going on. Got a beer on the back of there, got a beer on the other side. Right, let's just do a well, grinder because I want to put it back down and make sure it doesn't run. Okay. Next little bit then, guys. So we've got a bear. We've done something quite aggressive. Do we need to touch anything on the top? Not dramatically now. Let's just see if we can show you where. Give you a better idea. Hope you can see new shiny material. Great. Okay. That looks fantastic. Beautiful there. There. Now we said to you, we're not going to lose all the dents. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to blend them in, make it a sharp edge along. If I lose everything, I end up with no blade. I do have a spare, but I've got something sharper. Now, I'm just going to go back to the bench. Let's have my block of pine to raise us up so it gives you something as a sight line. Sit on top. I've got a little diamond file, knife one, knife one. Nah, small one. Why have I changed? That'll give you the clue. I think we look at number three, Ben. It sits across there. It's too big to get in here nicely to use a little bit. So I'm going to go back to little diamond lap. 240, I think, will be good enough for a lawnmower. What we're trying to do here, take the bear off the back of the blade. One side, bring it round. Other side. And then the trick is really not to hit the stones. Flip it over, other side on there. Yeah, it's a bit coarse. Work back through them. 320s, that one. A little bit on the edge here. Lurse it back over. I'm going to check. Getting back to a sharp edge, I hope. Feels better than it came when it came in here. I well, we never realised that if you cut your grass properly, you're cutting it, not pulling it. Um, makes quite a difference when you get better growth out of it. So one there feels a bit better. Last few things. We know it's going to get more grass on there when we start. Trying to keep it clean, stop the rust getting into this. Yeah, now this isn't kind of. I think that's quite good. It's a luma. Great. So, last thing because I know I had real problems when I took this off. The bolt's gone a bit rusty, so I've already done the bolt at home. I've cleaned it. Don't want the rust in here. And again, this is about trying to stop all the resins that we're cutting, or from the plants that you're cutting, sticking to the blade, but also stop it going rusty. Quite an important part. Let's move a few things. Now, got our axe back in there. Last little thing. We used it briefly, hand file. If you go with something like your hand file, you will want file card to clean this out. One of the questions we had the other week from some of the guys, how do you keep your files looking nice? Stop them going rusty. So I wipe on some camellia. I store them in a separate packet. So I've got cardboard sleeves at the moment or leather case, whatever you like, but I saw them apart. I don't put them all together. 
I want them to be stored separately. A little bit of chameleon will help protect it, look after it so it doesn't go rusty. Like everything else, rust is a major killer for cutting edges and files are a good example. Best tip I can give you for reality, probably where we've been doing today, and hopefully that it's been useful, hoping things will be sharper, give you a bit of inspiration to go out there. This has taken me an hour and I've done a running commentary of so if you think an hour, we've done all those little tools, they're ready for the season. Get you out there, get things, you know, growing, trimmed, whatever else. Doesn't take long. So quite easy to do. Diamond fowl is probably the gardener's best friend these days. Quite easy to have. Hang it up in your shed. It's there, ready to go. Touch the tools up. Hopefully, I've explained things nicely, given you a bit of a better idea. Craig, you got any more questions on there? Fantastic. So, guys. Easter weekend, obviously. Hope you enjoy yourself. If you're going out to your garden, look at your tools, assess what you're going to need to do. We will be back in here next week, next Tuesday. Colwyn's back in. All right. So Colwyn's doing some turning stuff. So he will be back in. Thank you all very much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice weekend.